Hi, I'm Elise Brogan. I'm a GP in Derbyshire and I'm the Education Lead for the Mutual Practice Fellowship. And working closely with us, we have Amy Foster, who's our admin support. And this video is about explaining what the New to Practice Fellowship is, both for potential employers and for newly qualified GPs who might like to join the fellowship. I mentioned the GP Task Force, so that's the Derbyshire-wide task force working closely with the Local Medical Committee, the GP Provider Board and Health Education Derbyshire to give wraparound support for, for practices. So the first question that we get asked is, what is the Mutual Practice Fellowship? So these have been going for a couple of years now, nationally um, arranged, and you're entitled to join as a Mutual Practice Fellow. If you're within 12 months of your CCDT date, you can sign up, join us, as long as you're in a substantive GP role, by which I mean a salaried or a partnership role and included in the salaried aspect of GP retainings as, as well. The remuneration is based on your actual salary. I use the example of a six clinical session GP who is therefore entitled to two thirds of a session of new to practice time a week. If you were full time, if you were working nine sessions, it's one session. That's where that arithmetic comes from. So within that um, two thirds of a session per week, you're remunerated at your salary rate. So your practice manager will invoice on an annual basis. It's changed to annual. So two thirds of a session per week, plus they invoice for 30% to cover the on cost by which I mean the national insurance and pension contributions on that portion of your salary. That's really useful. Mm -hmm. We talked also when we were planning this about whether people work within their clinical mm -hmm. sessions or, or without. So if the practice is releasing you for that two thirds of the session, then obviously your reimbursement stays with the practice to cover that mm -hmm. fill. If, for example, you and the practice said, no, we don't want to eat into the clinical commitment, then that becomes an added portion of salary for the two years that you're on the scheme. It all has to be paid into the practice. There's no two ways about that. Mm -hmm. Very clear. Mm -hmm. So, um, we talked also about pauses, um, and if you join the scheme and then have sick leave or parental leave or caring leave then you simply call a pause on the scheme and when you come back into work the scheme restarts there's no sick leave entitlement in, within it mm -hmm. the overarching purpose though in all of that i think is supporting people as they come into practice and i wonder if you can outline what that support looks like. Yeah, so the support comes in three ways. The first is mentoring and we've had fantastic feedback around that. Each um, new to practice fellow is assigned a mentor and the mentors are qualified GPs who are also very well trained in mentoring and as I said we've had brilliant feedback. A lot of people who didn't expect to get a lot from the mentoring have really enjoyed it. Yeah, you get an hour a month and over 24 months of the scheme, that relationship really, really builds and is, is invaluable, I think. That conversation with mm -hmm. someone who knows the job mm -hmm. but isn't a part of your practice, yeah. So the second thing is education and networking. So myself and Gail arrange education sessions that occur on a Wednesday afternoon, the third Wednesday of every month. Now, we're very pleased to say that we're having face-to-face -face sessions now as well as Zoom sessions and we'd really encourage you to speak to your practice about the um, sessions that are going to be face-to-face. -face. We give you lots of warning to enable you to be able to be released um, for those sessions. So we would hope that you come because you just get a lot from it. Um, the Zoom sessions are great because not only can you do it from home or from work, but they're recorded, so if you can't attend, you can watch them back. The final thing, so we've got mentoring, education, and the final thing is time for a project. So 
scale? Do you want to just tell us a little bit what, what that means, what the project looks like? Yeah, if we go back to the, the maths, your six clinical sessions, your two thirds of a session you'd practice a week, that gives you about 11 hours a month. So a couple of hours for the shared learning events, mm -hmm. an hour for mentoring, leaves you about eight hours a month to do a, a project. Again, in the national guidance and the, the link will be within this presentation talks about portfolio style PCN working. What we're wanting to do is try and get you to be exposed to things outside of your practice. Some examples that have stuck with me are things people have done. One was developing a green practice, so looking at other practices and other workspaces and bringing ideas back into their practice. Another example was someone who was really wanted to be involved with education, so use their time with Derbyshire Education Network, DEN, to help uh, provide education across the county. Like we said, is it heavily policed or not? Elise, what's your take on that? The whole point of the fellowship is to be supportive. So no, it's not policed. It is very much self-directed, self-motivated. But we have brought in this year a session, one of the education sessions, where each of the new practice fellows will present their project. So either that will be the completed project, depending on where you are in the scheme, you'll be in the middle or having ideas at the beginning. It's just around supporting and giving feedback from the other fellows. Yeah, it's just that balance really of you being remunerated. We may be asked to report back to NHS England and Health Education England. So that bit of reporting and also it leaves library of what people have done before for us to, to build on which is really useful I think. We were also thinking you know if you try and think negatively about the scheme what why should an employer um, be interested in having you as a new to practice GP? I think really it produces that more rounded supported GP um, gives peer group interaction and mentoring. So it's a short length of time, it is reimbursed. So our experience is that practices are really getting on board now with supporting you in GPs. Um, so Gail, a question we have had is, what can locums get out of this? Are they not allowed? What, what's the thoughts around that? The national guidance is purely for GPs in a substantive role. Here in Derbyshire, we really value our locum workforce. And so although we can't reimburse you uh, and join you as a new to practice GP, you're very welcome to join all our shared learning uh, events. You can access mentoring through GPS, a Nottingham and Derby based GP mentoring system. Um, so get in touch with us. We do want to support you. Yeah. If you want to join us, and we certainly hope you do, uh, your first point of contact is through the GP task force um, email. Undoubtedly it'd be Amy who replies to you. And then if you want a conversation with Elise or myself, either by phone or um, teams, then we can easily arrange that. We're really happy to talk face to face and on a one to one basis about what, what it means for, for you in your, your practice. So please email GP Task Force if you have any questions or at all interested. Thank you. Yeah.